Bye, everybody. I'll just give you, give people a few minutes to join while I get my lashes ready. Really looking forward to tonight. It's taken a lot of preparation. It's going to be a very fun look. Hi, Louise. Hi, Claire. Hi, Laura. Hey, Lucy. Thanks for joining me. Say hello when you join so I know who's here. Hi, Luce. I'm trying to get my mirror adjusted where I can see what I'm doing, but also look in the mirror. Oh, my phone. Hi, Joe. Hi, Louise. This is my attempt at a Twiggy esque hairstyle. Hey, Laura. Laura, you're going to love this tonight. It's going to be so much fun. Um, oh, that's the one thing I need today. Okay. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Claire. Um, oh. oh, there we are. I disappeared for a minute, but I came back. Hopefully that's going to not carry on happening. I'll go ahead and get started. Um, just to let you know, I've already prepped my skin. I've put moisturizer on and eye cream and a bit of lip balm. That's a really crucial step in doing your makeup. You want to make sure that your skin's freshly hydrated, um, that you definitely have got eye cream on, and, um, and hydrate your lips. Because the lipstick I'm going to use tonight is very matte, so it's important to put a bit of lip balm on at the beginning so it doesn't disturb the matte formula um, at the end so it gives it time to soak in um, it's also really important to make sure that your skin's nicely hydrated so that your foundation goes on nicely because your skin or your makeup's only going to look as good as your skin underneath and that's that goes all the time um right so let's get started 1960s twiggy style um, as I said in the group before, if you guys read my post, um, who saw my post earlier with the picture, the photos, um, I was talking about how Twiggy's style came about. She actually pinched it from Grace Coddington. Um, if anybody's ever watched the September issue, you will know Grace Coddington. She was Anna Wintour's right-hand woman at Vogue, creative director. Uh, she's actually from Anglesey, and she, um started off as a model so I'm just priming my skin with Hollywood flawless finish as per usual but I'm particularly hitting the cheek area tonight because I'm I'm very red on my cheeks I think I caught the Sun I was gardening over the weekend I hate gardening by the way so don't like get excited about that so yeah so Grace Coddington this kind of cut crease downturn eyeliner and little drawn on lashes was actually her signature look and Twiggy pinched it from her and made it famous. Hi Katie. Hey Liz. Hey Sylvia. So there we go. I can't believe this is actually the sixth week of doing this which seems insane. It doesn't, it feels like it's dragged, but it also feels like it's flown by. <laughs> I don't know. How's everyone doing? How's everybody feeling? Did you have a nice weekend and enjoy the weather? Right. So that's Hollywood Flawless Finish all over to tone down this redness and give me a nice prime. So tonight's foundation, I'm going to use the Ordinary Serum Foundation, and this is because um, this is not a heavy foundation look. It's a light foundation application. Um, Twiggy had freckles, and her freckles shone through her makeup. Um, so it was you know, very light, very young, very fresh. Now, I am neither light nor young nor fresh, so 
I'm, I'm gonna do my best to pretend. <laughs> hey Cass. So I'm just gonna put on a very sheer application. So as I was saying, Twiggy kind of made this look famous. And the look that I'm doing tonight is actually slightly inspired more by Edie Sedgwick. Um, who knows who Edie Sedgwick is? Has anybody heard of her? Give me a like or a, a thumbs up or a hallelujah or whatever you want to give me. Just gonna go over that with my beauty blender. <laughs> so Edie Sedgwick was actually um, kind of an it girl of her time, and she was a, mu a muse to Andy Warhol, and part of that whole factory scene in New York. She was very troubled, very troubled individual, but a party girl. So she had more of a hooded eye like myself. So I'm following kind of her makeup more than Twiggy's because Twiggy had really big, gorgeous doe eyes that were very, very rounded. And I've I've had a play with this makeup a few times, trying it in different ways. And that kind of rounded doe eye look just does not work for me. It makes, it, it just looks weird. So we're not doing that um, we are doing that cut crease look tonight, but it's just going to be a slightly different shape that's more appealing on my face. Um, but obviously you need to, the whole thing about this look is that you really, really have got to look at your eye shape and plot out where you're going to apply the eyeliner, um, where you're going to apply the cut crease and how it's going to work with your eye shape. So it's really about getting to know your face and getting to know your eye shape, which is a beneficial thing, I think, for all of us to do right so what I'm gonna do now um so brows in the 60s very very natural again I'm using glossier boy brow and I'm just brushing these bad boys up trying to make them really fluffy so it is actually applying a bit of color as you can see I do need to tint my brows and I thought about doing them today but I didn't I wasn't sure if it would work for or against this look so I thought I'll just leave it until tomorrow and then um, it gives me some flexibility I can always add my own color onto these bad boys So come on guys, you, you're being quiet. Tell me how your weekend was. What did you get up to? I did gardening. I don't like gardening. So tell me nice things that you guys have been doing. And I'm so sorry, but I've got an itchy nose. Oh, I've got hay fever. It's driving me nuts. But yeah, please give me a sign. And then I'm going to use my brow brush. And just a little bit of like um, a taupey brow powder. It's very light. Just fill them in slightly. Hi Joe, thanks for watching. There we go. So just very fluffy brows, brushed up, filled in a little bit. That's very easy to do. Um, right, so moving on. Um, I'm actually, I'll go ahead and do the freckles. So I played badminton in the garden, had a virtual family quiz yesterday. I'm thinking about doing a, a virtual quiz. I need to kind of get it together. Shireen's really good with that kind of thing. Sylvia's been painting, fencing, gardening, boring task. Yeah, I know. It's, I, it bores me to death. 
so I'm gonna I'm gonna do some like fake freckles I'm using a Kiko a Kiko Milano eyebrow marker which is you normally use to fill in your eyebrows and this is number two which is like a light brown so I'm trying to get in closely so you can see so I'm just gonna dot a few freckles Twiggy was had freckles mainly just across her nose and cheeks probably a few on her forehead I get freckly in the Sun in the worst place possible I get like a freckle tash it's really not cute at all so I'm just doing a few little dots but these little pens are a great way of like faking it now I'm just popping a few more on they're not as visible on the um, on the camera as they are to the naked eye but you want them to be a little bit darker than you would expect because once you powder over this and add your concealer and other things it will dull them down so that's my fake freckles and now I'm just gonna prime my eyes I'm using Catrice eye foundation and I'm just gonna do that with my fingertips tonight I'm not using the Urban Decay Eden primer because I need something with a little bit more give tonight because I am probably going to add and remove and change the shape this is definitely a look that you're gonna want cotton buds for ladies and as I said before it's all about experimenting with the shape of your eye and what works with your eyes um, so I'm gonna use my fluffy blending brush and I'm just using a very pale ivory eyeshadow matte from the Viseart matte um, basic palette this one here the palest that there is now the thing is right you can use a matte ivory like this or you can use a blue or a green or a lilac um, with colors the shimmer is kind of fun but all of those are appropriate to the 60s I've just gone for the matte pale lilac I'm actually gonna turn that light down a little bit maybe you guys could see it's out better with the light turned down slightly um, so I've gone for the matte ivory because that's more the traditional kind of twiggy look that you see and it's definitely more like Edie Sedgwick because she didn't really go for the color when I practiced this on myself my husband was like Ooh, that's that's really not colorful at all and I'm like yeah I know it's not supposed to be <laughs> um, right so I'm gonna start with I'm using my my Kitco mini shade and shadow brush so you can see it's a tiny tiny little brush and it's very thin and compact and again I'm using this Viseart palette but I'm using this light taupe is it Sylvia so was it better turned down should I turn it down further I can if you want I feel like it's really I don't know maybe I haven't got my lighting right tonight let me do that um so I'm using this taupe color here and I'm gonna have to look in my mirror to do this because it's very precise now my eyes are two different shapes as I discovered when I was practicing this look there this one's a lot more hooded than this side so I'm gonna start with my left eye because it's the one I know that's a little bit awkward for me and then if I can get that shape right when I do my right side it'll be easier for me to match up and have things um, 
be symmetrical. So I'm just going to start, as I said, with the very light taupe color on my brush. And I'm just going to kind of map out where I'm going. probably be really quiet while I'm doing this because I have to concentrate so much. So as I said, I'm not doing the rounded twiggy look. I'm doing it more like a, a fl little flick here on the end because that's more flattering for my eye shape. And I'm doing this line probably about two or three millimeters above the crease. You don't want to do this in the crease because then when you open your eye, that line will disappear. Okay, so I'm happy with that shape. I'm gonna try the other side now. So I'm looking, I'm looking at where I'm starting. So I just want to look up and match myself in the camera as well because it looks different in the camera than it does in the mirror. It gives me more a, a true reflection of what we're doing. So you can see this one already looks a little bit higher than this side. But what I'm going to do is kind of round that up a bit more. And it's really tricky this and it might take a few goes. I mean, obviously, it's not necessarily a look that you would wear out. But it's definitely an, an, a good option for fancy dress. So I just want to make sure I bring that wing there. Okay, so I've got a couple areas that I need to clean up. Um, but before I do that, it, it is going to look a bit janky for a minute. I'm actually going to, um, start darkening that line up. So I'm going to go in, I've started with the lightest taupe color here and I'm just going to move my way across. Um, I think I'm just going to go in with the gray. The gray is going to be the darkest color I use, um, I'm not going for a solid black and it's, I have found it much, much easier to use eyeshadow than to go in with a pencil or a liquid, but it all depends on the person and it depends on the type of look you want to achieve as well. It does look really weird, I know. It, it's a very kind of strange look. Once I put the lashes on, it just really makes it, it brings that 60s flair to it. Has anybody done this type of look before? Okay, 
now that I have, um, I just got my cotton buds. Now that I have kind of my basic shape that I want, I'm going to have to go back in and clean it up a little bit. So I'm using my little dinky cotton buds and my micellar water. And I'm just going to use the wet end to sharpen up. the flick on that side because I didn't have it quite right and also to sharpen up there there we go that's looking more symmetrical now where I, I've gone I did use the wet end first and sharpen that up and then I used the other end which is dry to just take away any of the excess liquid. But as you can see, the pale ivory eyeshadow is gone from those areas. So now I need to go back in. So I'm gonna use my shade, Lux Shader from Zoeva and just precisely go in and pop that back, that ivory back in where it needs to go. If it will go. Oh, it doesn't want to stick there. There we go. Okay. How's that looking so far? Hi, Ellie. If you've just joined us, you're probably looking at this like, oh my God, what the hell is she doing? That this looks so janky. I'm just thickening that up a little bit more. The light blue will try it with an ivory color. I think the ivory just makes it pop a little bit more. But I do think the blues and greens and lilacs are really pretty too. It just depends on the vibe of the look that you want to create. So I'm going to move on to my eyeliner now. And where's my little eyeliner brush? The trouble is I can't see anything. I've got my glasses on. So as always, I'm using my Illamasqua Precision pre <laughs> Tongue Twister Precision Gel Liner and my Feliner brush. And I'm just going to I'm gonna line my line my eyes on the top just to the end. Powering off. Oh, that was my Bluetooth speaker I forgot to turn off before. Okay, so I'm just lining the top for now. And we're not doing a flick. We're doing like almost like a reverse flick where it goes down. This is nerve wracking. I feel like I need a glass of wine. Is anybody else having a glass of wine? I'm trying not to um, have a drink during the week because it's so tempting right now, isn't it? I don't know what is up with my left eye tonight. It's better. I just need to thicken that up a little bit. Okay. So, we've just lined the top. And this is like the complicated bit. And again, this really depends on your eye shape too. I'm gonna do this kind of downward flick. You 
can see that. And this brush really helps achieve that look. Now, because I have very small eyes, I'm actually going to take a little extra flick. And I'm not doing these too long because I have such small eyes and it just takes it into a place, I don't know, I just don't, I just, I've tried it and I tried it out and I just didn't really like the way that it looks. So now I've done my eyeliner, I'm looking back on this and I want to kind of strengthen that up a little bit more. So I'm going back in with that gray gray shadow. I'm just gonna give that a bit more oomph. Yeah, I think I prefer that. <laughs> Thanks, calf. I don't know about great. It looks like fancy dress at the moment. Kath, you'll like that you'll appreciate the story. Years ago, when I worked for Estee Lauder in Boots in um, um, Warrington, I had the loveliest customer who used to always come in. And I cannot for the life of me remember her name. But she wore this type of eye makeup. Um, and she used like the Estee Lauder like really pale ivory eyeshadow color and like the khaki green safari green I think it was and she would she wore so much and very very strong very bold um like it was painted on really thickly and some of the people I worked with in the shop used to make fun of her and call her Coco the Clown. And I hated that because I thought, you know what, she's, okay, yeah, fair enough. She was stuck in, stuck in a rut from 40 years ago of this eye makeup look. But, um, but she had a look that she liked and she was confident enough to rock it. And, um, and she bought two eyeshadows off of me every two weeks, so... I was happy about that. She was a lovely woman. She she bought me a really a lovely gift when I left there. But yeah, she wore I can't you know, she wore this color. I mean this look. But she also shaved off her eyebrows and drew them on, and she drew one slightly higher than the other, so she always looked a bit, you know, um, sassy. Right, I've actually, I've gone back in and I've mixed the grey with this charcoal black. It's not really a super black black, um, but it's, it's quite dark, but it's not the darkest black eyeshadow. Um, just to give that a bit more definition. And before I do anything else now, I'm going to go ahead and go in with my concealer. Um, tonight I'm going to use, where did I put it? We'll use that one because it's to hand. Um, I'm going to use Illamasqua Skin Base Concealer. And the reason I'm doing this is because I can't really do this after I've drawn my little twiggies under my eyes. Otherwise, it will cover them. Okay, so that's a really nice um, concealer, by the way. It has like a, can't really see in the light, but it's got a metallic applicator. So when you apply it, it's cold on your skin. So it helps to relieve puffiness. Which is always welcome on my 
leave any puffiness on my face okay um, right so again with my small brush and this time I'm going to use just um, probably like a bit of taupe and medium brown I'm going underneath um, I'm not lining all the way anybody who's had a makeup lesson with me knows this trick but I talk about your eyes being in thirds and doing the rule of thirds so we're using the middle third on the bottom lash line and just applying a little touch of very light brown eyeshadow just to give some quick definition Okay. And then we can go in and do our little twiggies. So I'm going to use my gel eyeliner again. And I'm going to use my tiny liner brush from my Kit Kat, which is this one. So it's not the fee liner, although you can use that, but I I prefer this one for this job. It's a little bit shorter, very thin, very precise. And I'm just going to draw and try to keep them all at the same angle. So I'm just doing the outer two thirds. One smudged a little bit, so I'm just gonna fix that up. Okay. When I'm watching Order of Last Pajama, my part of my impression on sale plus 20% off. That is excellent. Yeah, I've um I have never used their liner brush, but I've heard good things about it. So that's a really good deal, 20% off. They do have a lot on sale. I think a lot of places have got everything on sale at the moment. I don't think people are buying um, beauty right now. They always say, with <laughs> all cast, Gail used to always say lipstick's recession proof, didn't she? Rest her soul. just trying to make sure again I'm always taking a step back to have a look so sometimes if you if you're blind like me and you use a really close-up mirror you need to take a minute step back look into a bigger mirror and make sure that things are symmetrical when you're doing a look like this especially and I am making mascara face like Ooh. Okay, probably not quite as sharp on the right side as I would like. So we go in with a bit more. That's better. Right, so I'm just gonna get ready to pop my lashes on. I think I'm just going to sharpen up this liner a little bit on this side. Oh, I keep sniffling. I have to dab. I have to remember next week to take my antihistamine before we start.
Okay. But I feel that that's good. If I, you know, it's one of those, if you keep messing with it, you're like, oh, what am I going to do? Um, so I'm just going to, before I do my lashes, I'm just going to quickly use my um, Lux shader or Lux smoky eye brush, actually. Add the ivory color for my Viseart palette. And I'm going back in. to brighten up under that cut crease. What do you guys think of this look? Is this something that you're gonna try? Or do you think, is it a bit too out there? I might have done it a bit crazy tonight. And I mean, you can actually soften it a little bit too with, um, I think this is my Zoeva pencil brush. And you don't have to use black. You can use brown, gray, softer colors if you want right let's get some lashes on i think that lashes are gonna pull it all together so tonight we're gonna do top and bottom lashes and i've chosen um i'm using prima lash bamboo lashes um and for some reason i have lost the label on them so i can't tell you what which style they are but these are vegan mink lashes made out of bamboo. And then I've got some little bottom lashes that are just cheap plastic ones I got from Amazon. Um, I got like a pack with all of these in them from Ch Chinese Amazon quite cheaply. So the more mascara, the better with this look. So clump it on. And like I said in, in my post about Edie Sedgwick, she actually um, she actually would use baby powder on her eyelashes in between coats to really get them thick and clumpy and add length. And I have actually tried that before. Sorry, I've just had a text message pop up then. Sorry about that. Um, sorry, it's it's my phone's really awkward. Whenever something pops up and I go to knock you know, get rid of it, then it pauses the filming. I feel like Edie Sedgwick. I'm also, I managed to get mascara there on my eye. Hooded eye problems. Does anybody, does everybody understand what it is when you say you've got a hooded eye? And if so, do you know that if you have a hooded eye situation? Okay, lovely. I'm just gonna do my top lashes first. I'm just gonna get my glue ready. So hooded eyes are where the kind of overhang your um, your eyelid, your top eyelid, which is a shame because then that means you can't always see the loveliness of your eyelids and eye makeup. So you do have to think about how you do your makeup differently. And I don't know what, it, what a hooded eye is. So yeah, so Liz, it's where the top part of your eye is heavier and it droops. I don't want to say droop because young people have hooded eyes. You know, Taylor Swift has a hooded eye. Um, 
and I'm trying to think of other people, but it's basically where you can't really see much of your top eyelid and therefore when you go to do your eye makeup, you need to kind of accommodate for that and you need to um, kind of work, work, not work around it, but just maybe do your eye makeup differently than what you see um, most people on Instagram or YouTube doing their eye makeup because they always tend to have really big eyes with loads of eye space. I have as I got older. Yeah, sometimes that happens when you get older. It's true. And you can get, um, I know Renee, hey Becky. Becky is Harry with you tonight. Do I need to say hello to Harry, my number one fan? Um, Renee Zellweger, there's somebody with hooded eyes and she famously had an eye lift done which completely changed the way that she looked and I thought she looked very strange but it seems like it's um, settled she's kind of settled into it now and I haven't seen Judy yet but I'm looking forward to watching it I hope it comes out on one of the streaming things soon while we're on this lockdown would be good because I've got a lot more time to watch films if anybody can recommend any good films to watch let me know we watched Men in Black International the other night and that was pretty good it was better than I expected because I'm an old school Will Smith Men in Black person Oh, is he asleep back? Well, you can tell him I shouted out to him because maybe he'll want to watch the replay. Right, let's pop these lashes on. So I've chosen these lashes tonight. Oh my God, what did I do there? Um, I chose these lashes tonight because they're quite fluffy. When I was practicing this week, I did actually use like a very, very thick lash that was really spiky because I thought that might look more 60s, but I didn't really love it, love the look of it in pictures. Okay. So essentially, <laughs> she says, it's very simple. I drop... I drop my lashes onto the center part of my eye on top of my lashes, natural lashes, although tonight they're wanting to stick because I put loads of mascara on. And then once I've done that, I stick the corners down. Now the trick, Scent of a Woman, oh that's a great film Sylvia. Lovely, I like that. You can see the lashes really really take this look and make it what it is meant to be which is this like sexy 60s situation um right let's have a go at this side so the magic trick with putting your lashes on is to put your glue on and let it dry until it's almost completely dry and then they stick very easily and very quickly And you're not faffing about with them sliding everywhere and being silly. Okay? Right, lovely. Those, those are stuck down. Now, I've already glued my bottom lashes too. What side is this? I think this is this side. So 
somebody asked me when I was doing my bottom lashes the other week, um, do you stick them on top of your lashes or underneath? I try to get them underneath, but sometimes you can't. So sometimes you just lie them on top. Um, these have got an invisible band. But because they're very small and very fine, they're also incredibly fiddly. Oh, my eyes are going to start watering. Oh, that's my trick to stop eyes watering, is if you just close your eyes and do a big disgusting sniffle like I just did there. And then that stops the watering from happening. Okay, can you guys see? The 60s is fabulous. Don't look at my gray roots. So I think that's pretty much the eye makeup done. I'm just gonna I'm happy with how <laughs> how quickly I got that to be even. It took me ages when I was practicing to get it really even. But as you can see with my eye shape, if I bring that down, straight down like Twiggy does it, then it would just, it, it just doesn't suit my eye shape at all. So that's why I kind of did it more like Edie Sedgwick and kind of flicked it out a bit. But you can do whatever works for you. And I, I cannot wait to see how it go, works for you too. So just to finish off now with our complexion. Um, oh, I put my contour stick. I always put everything to hand, I promise you that, and then I lose it. Um, right, so I am using the NYX Wonder Stick Contour Stick, and I think this is just the universal shade, and it's like a nice color. So Twiggy, obviously it was emaciated, um, possibly had an eating disorder. No, I kid. I don't know. If she, I don't think that she did. She was just very thin. So there's no way that I'm going to be able to replicate those cheekbones, but I'm just gonna, I see this. Laura, I really don't think I do, but it's nice of you to say that. So I'm just gonna try and contour my face with this wonder stick. Now I'm gonna tell you something very strange which doesn't surprise you at all, I'm sure. But this, there's a smell about, the, I don't, I have no idea what it smells like. It doesn't smell like any fragrance or anything like that. I am obsessed with the smell of it and I don't know why. It's just, it's not like it smells perfumey. I can't even tell you what it smells like, but I'm just obsessed with it. Sometimes I just sniff it, cause I'm weird. Um, but you know, we're all friends here. We've all got weird stuff, right? But yeah, if you go on Pinterest and you look at 60s makeup, you will see lots and lots of different styles of this. And I'm getting rid of my 90 chins doing my boy George contouring okay so again 60s they didn't really wear a great deal of blusher I'm just gonna use cream blusher um, my Illamasqua this one I'm gonna use is emerge which is a slightly um, lighter version of androgen which I normally use my spatula but I do love these I love these cream pigments they're fantastic they they're very versatile this one is also really good for color correcting under the eyes 
if you've got particularly dark blue circles right so you can see this this is very faint just a hint of peachiness and I'm using my real techniques contour brush for this okay and I think what we'll need to do now as well is just add a bit of highlight in again 60s it was more the there wasn't like these pearlized highlighters well I suppose that there was but this is more of a matte look so we're going for a really really matte look um, I'm actually going to okay I have this amazing concealer that my sister-in-law sent me from Korea um Misha and it is it is too pale for me but I love it as a highlighter it's great as a highlighter so let's get our let's get my concealer brush back and just get them cheekbones pop in because I don't have any Oh, has anybody watched Making the Cut? I know Lucy has. I watched the final last night. That was good. I am obsessed with Heidi Klum. She has some really great makeup. So yeah, I'm just highlighting down the center of my face. I know I'm sad it's over like I'm sad that I've, I'm done watching it now but sewing the sewing bees back on which is good too okay I also I, I you know what I'll be honest Luce I didn't love the winner when it first started but I grew to love them. Okay, so that's my highlighting and contour. Then we're just gonna go in with some setting powder. Where did I put my setting powder? I bet you guys love watching this. Go we're gonna start calling it Where Did Vicky Put Her Stuff Night. Um, ah! Well, there it is. It's all the way over here. That's a silly thing to do. And what else? I've been watching. Oh, Liz, that's fabulous. Liz, have you been making, um, have you been making any masks and scrubs? My, um, auntie-in-law rang me up the other day and said that she she'd been making um masks and she was posting some to us that's great Liz you guys are so amazing it's the sewing club such a lovely group just I'm going to give Liz a shout out because she's such a sweet, lovely person. And Liz uh, runs a group called Yummy Mummies and Little Bunnies. Um, bunnies. And they do lots of wellness programs and lots of um, uh, exercise classes and groups like that. Um, I actually do her crochet group when when we have it. Um, so... Give you know, give her a follow on all the social media stuff because they have some really great programs, um, and they're fun. Scrub hats and laundry bags, yeah. I think all of that's really needed right now, um, and they're just lovely ladies who go to the group and very supportive of one another. And Liz is such a sweet, lovely person. Sorry, Liz, just had to big you up. Um, right, so that's complexion, and we're just gonna finish off now. So you can see it now that I've put concealer and powder on. The little freckles are dulled down a bit. Oh, 
I can see it better in my mirror. I wish that you guys could see it better. Um, but the little freckles look a lot more natural. So, you know, when you put them on, it might, might look a bit crazy and you're like, oh my God. But after you've kind of, you know, they do dull down a bit, which is nice because it looks like, it looks real then. It looks like, it, like you can see the freckles through your skin kind of thing. Um, right, lips. So in the 60s, lip color was very, very pale. So Becky, Miss Concealer on the Lips, you're gonna love this one. I have the face shield made for my mom's nursing home. They didn't have any, oh God, so. Oh, Sylvia, I hope your mom's okay. It must be a really um, difficult and confusing time for people in nursing homes, um, especially if they have, um, you know, dementia or Alzheimer type issues. Um, so I have been thinking about you, Syl. Right, so I'm going to line my lips with, uh, it's a Beauty Pie pencil in, what color are we tonight? Oh, it doesn't say. It does say. I don't think I can read it because I need rummy pink. And it's just a very light pink. Okay, so just like a really light pink <laughs> for the rest of the group. I wore concealer on my lips like 20 years ago. Don't be silly. Sure, Becky, you're at home with the concealer. Like, that's how you've been spending your lockdown. So this is my personal lip stick. So I'm going to use it. It's Anastasia Beverly Hills and the color is pure Hollywood. Um, I like to use this to ha to to contour my lips, to kind of highlight the center of my lips, but tonight we're going in full whack. In my case, this is weekly news. That's wonderful news, Sylvia. It just, it must be such a worry. Oh, I really like that with the lip with the lip liner. Right, so Becky, you could get this, you could get this lipstick and relive your glory days. It's actually nice. What do you think? So, ladies, that is tonight's finished look. What do we think? Um, are you going to give it a go? Or is it a bit, is it a bit too crazy? I mean, I, I would really like to see people get very creative with this. You could, you know, you could do this um, cut crease in any color to the inside. Of, that's a good look. <laughs> so, you know, it's a fun look to master, but this is like, you know, it is the cut crease situation. See if anybody try it on Charlie Ann. Oh my god, that would look really good on Charlie Ann. Oh, calf give her my love. I'll try to make these do an inspired by look this week. Do you know what? Do an inspired by look any week. I don't expect people to do it exactly like this. Um, I want you to play around and get creative. That was the whole idea of this group to learn some new skills, but to just play around and have fun and get creative. Um, I certainly doing this every week I've been looking at different looks and I certainly feel very inspired and very uh creative and I feel like I'm trying things that I haven't done in a very long time just because I do so many weddings and I don't really get asked for this kind of thing it, it really does Joe. I mean makeup is such 
such a change. I think Becky asked me this week um, when we were chatting if to do a 50-50 face um, one week where I just do makeup on one side so you can see the difference that makeup makes. So I'm definitely going to do that. I'm going to plan that in. Um, and Rose, I don't know if, it, Rose, are you watching tonight? If you are, give me a shout. Um, I was talking to Rose this week, my friend, and she asked me to do a J-Lo look. Uh, so next week, my plan is to do a gold-inspired look, but I'm thinking of making it like gold and J-Lo, very bronzy kind of look. Um, I feel like I want to be more contoured for this Tweety look. Maybe, um, is it too late? I can't. Have I got my... Let me see what I've got here. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking next week, I'll use this one. Um, next week I will, yeah, gold is my favorite. I love, I love a bit of gold. I really want to do, um, next week kind of a JLo inspired one and I'm going to, I'm going to do it very, do you guys know Scott Barnes? Have you heard of Scott Barnes? Um, he's JLo's makeup artist. So there we go get a bit more contour in here um Scott Barnes is JLo's makeup artist and he is he's the one responsible for the Kardashian contour like you know the famous picture of Kim Kardashian with Tisha Klatt all over her face making her look like an alien that is Scott Barnes so I'm thinking of doing that that type of look, but very, very gold, bronzy, very sexy look. Yeah, sounds good, doesn't it? That looks much better, I think, now with that contour. It's amazing how different things look on camera to what they look like in the mirror. There we go. I feel more Twiggy-esque now. I feel like I have cheekbones. <laughs> um, right? So let me think. Is there anything else I need to tell you guys this week? I am. I posted a new blog post today. So that's on my website. Check that out. It's all about my favorite brushes. So this one's in it. This one's in it. This one's in it. Pretty much they're all in it. This one. This one. This one. So it's a list of all my favorite brushes. If you want to know more about my brushes and what I use um, and where you can get them from, that's on my blog post today that I posted today. Um, what else have I got to tell you about? Uh, we're up to 124 members, which is super duper exciting and I love it. Uh, so please, please, please keep inviting people to come join the group and um, you know, let's share, let's get, I've, I've got members in London, I've got members all over the world now, which is really fun. Um, and also I'm still doing online makeup lessons. If you're interested in that, if you've got questions, just shoot them over to me. If you want a more personalized look, um, just, you know, tailored to you. And, but like Adele, it is, yes, Adele is very kind of the 60s look Joe, but I think the colors, a bit softer maybe it kind of goes more with browns rather than the bl uh, black and gray I do want to do an Adele look because I love her makeup and I have a, a round face like she used to before she before she um joined the gastric bypass group or did she did she have gastric bypass or did she just diet really well you know I will take that if y'all think I look like Adele that's amazing fab right well thank you so much ladies as always i really really appreciate it from the very bottom of my heart um and like i said if you want anything or if you have questions about anything pop it in the post i'll post all the products in the comments in a bit like i usually do and have a great night lots of love stay safe stay at home and i will see you next week yay bye, -bye. oh how do i stop